name is Cesar Valentino. I am a dancer, choreographer, stylist, designer, makeup artist, and I've been voguing now for 37 years. I started in 1983, but I was first um, exposed to voguing in 1982. The reason why I decided to vogue was because it was a dance that was based on posing. It was just very fascinating to me, but it was also a dance that I noticed that was about expressing yourself through through these movements, and it was like posing like a it was like a pantomime freeze frame. I started old style voguing, which is very pop at the time. That was still in the days when people were doing like shibuki and stuff, so I was still popping and very tai chi, very ninja type voguing. I'm one of the founding members of the House of Ninja. So I was first recruited to be in the House of Ninja in 1986. Uh, the very first ball I walked was Paris Surprise Ball, 1988, and that's for Realness. And then after that, later the year, I started winning trophies for Vogue. It was an incredible experience. It, it really, there's something about people cheering for you, the butterflies in your stomach, the nerves, but the excitement, the feeling of validation, the feeling of love and respect. New York was very different. It was, you know, you weren't, you didn't have the same freedom to kind of be gay and openly gay and wear what you wanted. This is an attack on the individuals that happen to be here, but it's an attack on the gay community. Many gays say they now travel in groups, fearing that walking alone might increase their chances of being attacked. Places like the balls and the village and things like that were a refuge for people like us to kind of come together free of judgment and you know, free of, of harassment. Everybody was just so free to be themselves, but now there's this black cloud looming. They released the results of a study which shows that the lifestyle of some male homosexuals has triggered an epidemic of a rare form of cancer. The spread of the AIDS disease. We've declared AIDS public health enemy number one. AIDS is now the leading cause of death among young people in this country. I cannot begin to tell you how many people from our community were dying monthly. Like it was, it was not too uncommon back then to hear five, six people dying in one month. Did Scott, Robert, Bobby Olina Watson, Dan Bowers? How deeply are Americans worried about AIDS? A Los Angeles Times poll found that 50% of Americans favor quarantine for AIDS victims. 48% said they should be issued special identification. 15% said AIDS victims should be tattooed. I remember all that. I remember Potter's Field. I remember when they would, you know, all the people that had HIV or AIDS, whatever, were taken to Potter's Field. They were quarantined. They were separated. Um, people with HIV and AIDS back then were seen as just this, this plague, this thing that just you, you don't touch him, don't go near him. And, you know, it was a really, really tough time. Then you had, like, the ACT UP and, and some other, you know, smaller kind of organizations that did outreach and intervention and, and so the GMHC stepped in and they started creating programs like the House of Latex. I had an opportunity to get involved with the House of Latex and what it stood for, um, intervening in the community that I'm in, which is the black and Latino community and the scene that we do and what we're involved in and what we thrive on, which is the bull scene. And what I do in terms of the House of Latex and what I've been trying to do, I try to make sure that you know, they use condoms, you know, so on and so forth. Understand what's going on. It's a big deal to still be here. Without the people whose shoulders you stand on, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing right now. It's important to honor and respect your elders just like you honor and you respect your ancestors. Without them, you, you wouldn't be here right now. Um, so I think it's, it's important to not only preserve the history and the culture, but to honor and respect your elders, a lot of which are still alive and well. You know, don't go to people's funerals. Honor people in life, not in death.